with its share of suspense. We know that there's suspense, but there's suspense. It was the father in order to launch their offensive. Other means of warfare. Heart stopping action. Kind of, it's a bloody war zone. Why do you want to aid the terrorists? To be honest, I was truly horrified seeing the big guy with a the gun. They wouldn't be here detained for three days now if we protected, didn't know who they are. And gripping drama. International law. So everything is just uh, extemporary. You see, parang boom. War? And you? The four-day National Moot Court Competition, or NMCC, involves scenes straight from a must-watch movie. But the stars of this show are not actors and actresses. They are students driven to take the law out of their books and into real life where it belongs. The National Mutual Competition in IHL allows students to feel what it would be like to argue before an actual court proceedings, apply the laws they've learned, apply it in the case before them, and really articulate and advocate for the side that they are representing. This you don't typically get from a classroom setting. Since 2005, law schools from across the country have been sending their representatives eager to learn and practice International Humanitarian Law, or IHL. International Humanitarian Law is the law that applies in times of uh, armed conflict, so it's the law that deals with the situation of violence, and it seeks to protect persons who are affected by, by the violence of armed conflict. So it has rules to regulate how you conduct assertions, how you fight wars, and also rules in order to protect those that are not involved in the war, like civilians. Day one of the competition allows the participants to relax and get to know each other before the next day's action-packed sessions. Introduced in year 2010, the IHL Role Play Challenge allows students to take an active approach to learning about IHL by applying it in real-life situations. Here, students are immersed in armed conflict scenarios and are tasked to assume various roles as military officers, reporters, civilians, or representatives of the International Committee of the Red Cross, or ICRC. Scary experience, actually. Scary. <laughs> actually got scared with the, the SAF commander and but it's a hands-on learning experience it's moving out of the textbook so it just made me realize how difficult it must be for the ICRC to be in a situation surrounded by army people with weapons and saying all these things about humanitarian mission participants are graded on their knowledge of IHL and their ability to apply its provisions in concrete scenarios and under duress they have knowledge about the provisions in the IHL, uh, they know what is lawful, what are violations, and what are the excesses of either worry, I mean, uh, conflicting parties. No? Because in the Philippines, we have, of course, uh, it's an internal conflict. The role play challenge allows students to walk in other people's shoes. The mood court proper gives them a taste of their possible future selves. Full fledged lawyers defending their respective cases. This is their chance to present their memorials, which are essentially written pleadings, and to articulate and argue them before a panel of judges. Months prior to the competition, they were already given the moot court problem to study and work on. I think what's most striking was that the level of research required. It's not like you're in a classroom, you're just reciting, because uh, usually if that's the case with this, it's really taking you into uh, that sphere where it's really defending a client. The night before the moot court competition, students exchanged memorials, allowing them to preview the opposing team's arguments before the battle of words and wits ensues the next day. No matter how much you read, how many you read, you're never really prepared. And you're never really prepared for the gravity of the crimes which you face in these problems. So you don't really know what to expect. 
The elimination rounds involve two schools pitted against each other. Teams are given scores, which are then tallied at the end of the day. Feedback on each moot court match comes from a multifaceted bench. Judges from various fields, such as the academe, the legal community, and the military, bring diverse perspectives, providing students a more complete picture of IHL. From government, uh, at least from the policy-making side of government, we'd be looking at it from, uh, from the policy perspective. Uh, those coming from the military will be looking at how this will facilitate or probably hinder uh, military operations. After a grueling day of oral arguments, the team's scores determine the top four schools which will advance to the semifinals. With fewer teams remaining in the semi-final round, both participants and judges are kept on their toes, mindful of each performance. After judges have sifted through the arguments, they finally settle on the top teams. The two teams that will qualify for the final round of the Supreme Court advanced session ball are teams number 3 and 15. For these formidable finalists, who have already survived a host of trials, their toughest challenge is still to come. To plead their case in no less than the country's highest judicial court, the Supreme Court. Every lawyer in the Philippines would dream to have one day the opportunity to argue before the end bank. This moot court competition allows the law students to have a feel of what it would be like to argue before the end bank session hall. And the fact that an actual Supreme Court justice would sit as the chairperson of the board of judges for the final round. The court is now in session. Alleged members of the United Development Front, which is only a group established with the finalists going all out in their presentations, the Supreme Court Session Hall witnesses the convergence of a grand and powerful history and the promise and future of Philippine law. It was very pressure-filled. You try to answer na lang the questions, but but it was it was an experience, and you know you, you take something from it. I think that not most people would get to do this. The final round has come to an end. Participants hold their breath for the final revelation, the announcement of the year's top moot court team. And this year's champion is team number nine. I just want to thank everyone um, from the organizers, um, the judges, as well as the other mooters in the other schools. Uh, this was a very, very very interesting and very fun experience. I was uh, quite satisfied with the performance of the students and surprised with their uh, competence. The Supreme Court wants to invest in the future. We, we cannot trip unless we saw. A long-term goal natin is, of course, to make our lawyers uh, dynamic, able to adjust the changing needs of our time. The winning team's journey continues the following year as they represent our country in the regional moot court competition in Hong Kong. But for now, the champions savor their victory and enjoy the remaining time with fellow mooters. For them, it has been a life-defining event, something worth sharing with the next generation of mooters. They have to be prepared for lack of sleep and anxious moments. But for most um, law students, this is a very, very good springboard for them to um, practice their argumentative skills and thinking on their feet. So if they're the ones who would like that, I believe that they should join this kind of competition. But most importantly, Students are given the chance to learn and apply IHL, which continues to remain vital 
in view of ongoing armed conflicts. There is a growing opportunity for practice for lawyers in this field of international humanitarian law. So um, it's important also to tell the students that there is a viable field of practice and that, in fact, their market is not just here in the Philippines, it can transcend national boundaries. I really was able to practice how litigation, to some extent, is done. And second, in relation to international humanitarian law, we realize uh, the grave consequences of war and we see an opportunity for us to be able to, to help by spreading awareness.